Now the term intermediate tarantulas is not a scientific designation or in any way any kind of official label. Beginner tarantulas are species that are very easy to keep. They have very low husbandry requirements. They don't take a lot of experience. They're easy to care for. They're slow moving. They've got a low venom potency. Advanced species of tarantulas usually uh, are considered to have a higher venom potency. They're much faster. Their husbandry is a little more difficult. And they're usually only suggested for the more experienced keepers. Intermediate tarantulas are the species in between. They're good trends transition tarantulas from a beginner to a more advanced or more experienced keeper. Some of these are new world tarantulas that will prepare you for keeping old world tarantulas. Some are just really good beginner old world tarantulas. Species that may be best for you, for instance, if you've been keeping new world tarantulas for a while and you want to get your first old world species, these tarantulas would be ideal. And starting off with number 10 is the Salmopius erminia, also known as the Venezuelan sun tiger. This is a new world arboreal tarantula that actually lacks urticating hairs. That being said, it is a very fast tarantula, and its venom is rumored to be slightly more potent than most other New Worlds. Their husbandry is very simple, requiring just your basic arboreal tarantula setup. They have a fast growth rate, but they only live for about 12 years. The reason they're highly suggested as an intermediate species is because they can be very quick and defensive. With their deep black and bright orange coloration, they're a very popular tarantula in the hobby. The downside is they're also very secretive and spend a lot of time hiding their burrows, or tucked away in their web tunnels. So typically you only get to see them when you're feeding or if you happen to catch them out and about real late at night. Number nine is one of my favorite tarantulas in the world and that is the Harpectera pulcherpes, also known as the golden blue leg baboon. This is an old world terrestrial tarantula that does have semi arboreal tendencies, meaning you set up a terrestrial enclosure but give them some branches or other types of decorations that they can use as web anchors and they will create some stunning webbing above the surface. Their husbandry is very easy, and they're a pretty hardy species. Even though they can be very quick and skittish, they're relatively a docile tarantula. They have a medium growth rate, but only live about 12 years as well. My favorite thing about this species is their beautiful gold and blue coloration, and they make a great first old world tarantula whenever you're ready to make that leap. Number eight is a very feisty new world tarantula that grows pretty large, and that is the Xenethesis amanis. Commonly known as the Colombian lesserback, this new world tarantula has a higher moisture requirement which sometimes can be difficult for new keepers to maintain. They grow to a very large size, they are very fast and defensive, and are quick to kick those urticating hairs. And in particular, their hairs are extremely irritating. Another reason they're not ideal for new keepers is that they can be very flighty and will try to bolt out of the enclosure when you're feeding, watering, or even when you're trying to rehouse them. But they are a beautiful species and a lot of fun to care for and observe. And in my opinion, they're a great new world tarantula to kind of prepare you for keeping an old world species like an orange baboon tarantula. Number seven is another old world species, and that is the Hysterocratus gigas. You may know it by its common name, the Cameroon red baboon. And it's a fairly popular tarantula in the hobby, as many people claim that they are a communal species. Now this tarantula comes from Central Africa and can be extremely defensive. They're quick to give a threat pose, but they don't have urticating hairs. They tend to burrow and stay hidden a lot, which usually is a downside, but they are known to hunt for prey in the water. Many people have observed them diving into the water to catch fish, frogs, or other amphibians or aquatic creatures. Another reason they're more difficult than your beginner species is that this tarantula requires damp substrate with a high humidity. If you get your species as a spiderling, you'll be happy to know they have a pretty fast growth rate, so it won't be long until they're showing those adult behaviors and tendencies. Number eight, instead of a specific species, I'm just going to mention an entire genus, and that is the Pamphibetus species. Now, these are New World tarantulas, but they get very large when they're full grown and have very irritating urticating hairs. Not only that, they can move very fast and can be defensive when threatened. And a perceived threat could be anything from opening up the lid to the enclosure or changing a water dish or even dropping some food in there for them to eat. Speaking of eating, they are great eaters and usually very quick to pounce on prey. And unless they're in pre-mold, I have rarely seen my Pamphibeta species turn down a meal. They do need a slightly more humid environment than most beginner species. But this is a great tarantula to get to prepare yourself for keeping a species like the Goliath bird eater tarantula. Now number five is a very popular old world species and that is the Monocentrophus balfouri, commonly referred to as a Socotra Island blue baboon. This old world terrestrial species also have semi arboreal tendencies and can even be kept communally. With their bright white and blue colors, they're usually highly sought after in the hobby. They are not very defensive and they would rather run and hide than ever give you a threat pose or try to attack. And they are very good 
webbers, usually covering their entire enclosure in webbing, especially if they're kept communally. For an Old World tarantula, this is a fairly docile species with very easy husbandry. And it is a tarantula that I suggest to a lot of people as a great first species to get when you want to get into Old World tarantulas. Number four is a tarantula that's not nearly as popular as I think it should be, and that is the Tapinocinus caprius. Don't quote me on that Latin pronunciation, but commonly it's referred to as the violet tree spider. This is a New World arboreal tarantula that comes from Ecuador and has a very fast growth rate, but they're popular for being extremely skittish. They're very fast and will run laps around their enclosure when disturbed, but they're one of the few New World species that do not have urticating hairs. In most cases, they prefer flight to fight and will run and hide or dive into a burrow before ever giving you a threat pose. But their extreme speed and skittishness is why I always suggest them as an intermediate species. They have a gorgeous purplish violet velvet appearance, but they don't grow much larger than a 5 inch leg span. They're a very cool species and one tarantula I highly suggest people keep when they're ready because this tarantula tarantula has been known to jump when it's trying to escape, so you always got to have a catch cup on handy and be ready for about anything. Number three is probably one of the most notorious tarantulas in the hobby, and that is the Pteranoculus moranus, referred to as the orange baboon tarantula, the OBT, orange bitey thing, and many other nicknames. This is an old world terrestrial species, and again, they show some semi-arboreal tendencies. They can be very fast and skittish, and have a pretty strong reputation for being defensive. But a lot of that defensive behavior can be mitigated by proper husbandry. They can be quick to give a threat pose and slap the ground a few times. But in my experience, if you provide them plenty of cover, places that they can web up and build their tunnels to run and hide, nine times out of 10, they will retreat into their burrows before ever showing any defensive behavior. One reason that they're considered an intermediate tarantula besides their defensive tendencies is that rehousing can be kind of tricky. So rehousing this species does require you to be calm and have some experience. But using catch cups, paint brushes, and all the tricks of the trade and not freaking out, rehousing will not really be an issue at all. Number two is the Therophosini species Panama. Famously named the lava spider, this new world terrestrial is skittish and secretive, but they're also very expensive and very rare. They're a docile tarantula, but they spend a lot of time hidden away. They need a more damp environment, and they can be very fragile as slings. They're a dwarf species, so they won't grow to be a very large size, and they're extremely tiny when they're young. So between the high price, the small size, and the more damp or humid requirements, this definitely isn't a species for a first-time tarantula keeper. But if you feel like you've got your care and husbandry down, then I highly suggest picking up one of these tarantulas. Now, the number one intermediate tarantula, in my opinion, is definitely a crowd favorite, and that is the Pocilotheria metallica, or the Goody Sapphire ornamental, or the Parachute ornamental, or there's many different names for this tarantula. But they are an old world arboreal species, and they're very fast and skittish, and some believe they have possibly the most potent venom of any tarantula. Though this is debated and will require more study, they are the smallest species in the Postlotheria genus, and they're more apt to hide than give you a threat pose. In my opinion and experience, they're also the most docile species of Postlotheria. With their bright blues and whites and yellows, they're very sought after and highly coveted in the hobby, which typically means they're a lot more expensive. But they are a beautiful and extremely popular tarantula, even though they can be very secretive and bolty when disturbed. But compared to all the Postlotheria species that I've kept, they're definitely the easiest to keep and rehouse. Like the Postlotheria rufliata just poops all over the place, they're very messy. But the Metallica is much easier. And if you're looking for a gorgeous blue tarantula and you believe you have your husbandries and ability to rehouse down to a science, or at least pretty comfortable with that, then you can't go wrong with a Goody Sapphire ornamental. Now if you want to watch more of my top 10 videos, I will link that playlist right here. And as always, I appreciate you watching. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks for buying Tarantula Collective merchandise, and I will see you next Tuesday. <laughs>